Bet online is your number one source for all your summer sports this season. From MLB, golf, NBA, and NHL playoff stats. All the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet online, where the game starts. Tiger fans, welcome to another episode of Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club. I am the Corey C. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast so you don't miss out on a single episode. You can find us on the Apple Podcast app, Spotify, of course, YouTube, wherever you get your podcast. So be sure to follow the show and tell every Tiger that you know. And remember, when you support Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club, it all helps the cause, which is the I love. Jackson State University. And I have two special guests with me. And you know these guys. They don't need an introduction. One of them, he's the I love all the way. He's the ESPY winner. You know him. Big homie Tom Snacks. What's up? My guy, how you doing today? Good, man. Welcome back to the platform. How you been, brother? Man, I've been good, man. No complaints. I'm glad to be back on. I know you stay busy, but we appreciate you. You know, you're going gonna to always get show us love and give us time. So we know you're busy, but we know you take a few minutes out for us. Ain't no doubt. Ain't the time. And also making his return to the show now. I didn't know if he would come back on or not. You know, he great guy, great guy. I gotta say that. But you know, snacks. He went to another school. He went to a different school. I, I think it's uh, what's the name? It ain't in the junior college down there near Port Gibson, something like that. A JUCO. What's the name of it? I think it was Long Long. Oh, well, you the baby. <laughs> Dude, what's up? What's up, man? <laughs> I was ready to the reservation. And now you're on Tiger Talk. <laughs> I'm good, man. I'm like, good. Nice to be back. <laughs> nah, man, we appreciate you, man, <laughs> especially with, you know, with this topic, man. You're the first person I call, so so we'll put all that to the side, man, because we know we know you, you've been in the game forever, so we want to hear all about it. So how you been, man? Hey, I'm good. I'm good. It's, it's nice to be back. It's nice to be back. You know, I, I don't mind slumming sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> we hear you, man. We hear you. Well, I know it's uh, it's a busy season for both of you guys. I know, uh, you know, just because high school basketball season ended, that's actually when things pick up for y'all. So y'all staying pretty busy. Yes, indeed. Got the AU going, and yeah, that guys, um, the month of June is fast approaching. So you got you got elite camps, you got team camps, and summer league that's about to take place. So look forward to kind of seeing how these guys kind of um upcoming prospects kind of has, has transformed their game. And shoes, I know you're yeah. running up the highway all over the state. Yeah, I've been on the go, um, trying to go watch and play on some of these elite circuits. You know, try to try to see how they how they look out out there. Not just not just locally here against the local talent. So, man, I move around pretty good, and then you know I referee. So it's been a lot of AU going on. Been working working and stuff also. So it keeps me pretty busy. No doubt, no doubt. So you two are experts on these three guys that we want to talk about. We want to talk about Coach Mo Williams and his recruiting class. We want to focus on the state of Mississippi, man, because he's been pounding the pavement and, and bringing in some big names. We got the number three player in the state, Dorian McMillan, 6'3", two guard out of Pascagoula. We got the number five player in the state. We call him Spank Tamarian Hoover, 6'5", wing out of Yazoo. And we got the number seven player in the state, Ebo Wilson, 6'10", center out of Ridgeland. And we're getting those rankings from none other than MississippiHoopReport.com. We definitely got to plug that that website. So uh, let's hear about this class, man. What, what, what are th thoughts on the class overall? And, again, we just want to focus on the Mississippi kids. Well, first, like I say, we want to, you know, commend Mo for, for taking three three Mississippi guys, um, three freshmen. I definitely think that uh, these three guys, um, talent level can definitely – transition to this level i think that um i mean we got three guys that you can arguably say um when it's all said and done through uh their college career they could be all conference guys i feel like um i mean i think he's done a great job of taking like a good core group of guys to of course compliment like a guy like Deshaun ruffin that's that's gonna be there too I, I definitely think that these guys can or he can take them guys on his wing as being a jackson guy and being a local guy and I definitely can, can see how these guys kind of 
you know, make that jump as each year progress? Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of, I say this, I don't know a lot of people realize this. I say every, almost most of the teams, if you look over the last 30, 40 years from Mississippi that had really big, good teams, nice runs, did something special, had a strong core of Mississippi kids on that team. It just, it just, I think it means more to them. So promote and invest in, in, in the local kids and, and the best, to, to get those kids find this, this potentially special group of kids because he's got three of three that could be really, really good for his program. I mean, I, 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 I agree with Snacks that they all could be, um, all conference guys. I'll go as far as to say, if he's around, if, he, if, if he's here for four years, Doran, Doran has the ability to be play, a player of the year candidate, you know, a player of the year candidate down the line. So um, I think he really did, 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 uh, did himself a great, you know, a great, did great things for the program because he's got three kids that, you know, really, really can be good for him. Really, they're not just, not just pickups, uh, role players. These guys can be, be key guys, all of them, all three of them. Right, and again, going back to the rankings, like I said, three top ten guys. What what does that mean for Mo to get the number three player, the number five player, and the number seven player? Because there was a time when that was unheard of for a SWAC school or for a Jackson State. Those players, they're going G5 or, or P5, but now three of them are, are, are right here in Jackson with, with, with Mo Williams. So what does that say? Part of it is the change in the landscape with the recruiting portal kind of pushing guys in a different direction. But – um. It also says a great deal about the fact that he's willing to go after them. because a lot of look a lot of times out of schools don't go after those guys. They don't feel like they can get them. So it says a lot that he 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 even went after them and you know and, and put the work in to get them. I think it um it yeah. tells like Shu said. I think it tells it, um it kind of shows his belief in these guys. Um, like he said, a lot of coaches not not taking three freshmen, especially a uh, team that want to be competitively good um, right away. Um, and with a veteran group around these guys, I definitely think that, um, like like you said, Dorgan can be a guy that can can be a potential swag player of the year. I even think that Spank hasn't hit his ceiling yet either. Um, I think each year that he checks the box, uh, progressively, you know, adding a different element to his game each and every year. But I think with, like, the development that he'll be able to go through at Jackson State, on um, being around, you know, Mo Williams being around Trey Johnson, I definitely think that um, developmentally that he can make a, another jump in his game as well. And I think, I mean, Coach Adams has did, did a good yeah. job with the forwards and the bigs that there. Um, I definitely think that um, with Ebo getting in there, getting him a good summer under his belt, and you know we got like Romeo coming back. Mm. I definitely think that. Um, he can get in there and get some get some good bump and grind with those guys, and, and that you know they can they can help him kind of you know turn that corner too. Because I mean, like we said, like we saw. I mean, we got to see one year, Ebo, but we all saw flashes where you know when he clicking and hitting on our ceiling, he could be a special player too. So having the guys, the freshman, that's I mean, what six nine, six ten, mm -hmm. uh, let's just say, yeah. he, as he gets slim and his body kind of kind of develops, I mean, he can he can be a force to be reckoned with. You know, I totally agree with Max said that I think those guys, all of them, still got a lot of growing to do in their games. So they could really, really be a special group for most. Because none of them are near their ceiling yet. You know, mm -hmm. Dorian, you know, we, 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 we expect a lot out of Dorian probably this year. Uh, I think Mo, I think Spank and, and um, we both can, will play some this year, but they both have, especially those two, have, they, they're nowhere near their ceiling yet. And, I, and, and, and even with Dorian, Nowhere near the ceiling yet. They both have. They all have. A, they all have the potential to be, you know, way, way better than they are now. So that's one thing I was going to ask you. Do you feel like they any of these guys can, can have an immediate impact or, or play early? So your pick would be Dory of the three. What about you, Snacks? If you had to pick one that you would say would have the best chance to play early or have an impact, would it, who would you pick? Ooh. I know the common answer would be Dory, but I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say Spike. Because I think, like, of course, like, his body got to fill out, which I think over the course of, of years, like, he going to get bigger, he going to get stronger. But I think he also adds, like, a Swiss Army knife type of 
a play style where you, you ain't got to really draw up much for him. He can make the open shots. Uh, he rebounds from the guard position. And I think that translates to the swag game. I think that translates to, like, when when it matters most, I think, you know, a lot of a lot of um, guys, you know, like Doran is a guy I feel like that. You can go to him down the stretch, but I think Spank is a guy that, like, make winning plays too. I think he make, like, the plays that you, like, that you don't always praise, but he makes the play that helps the team win. So I think that, like, that stuff in the swag, I think, it, it you know, it's gritty. And, I mean, guys get after it. So I think having a guy, that you don't always have to night in, night out, have to get the best look for. Yeah, he can just be extremely solid. He'll defend. He'll so, look like we lost snacks. Hopefully he'll be able to jump back in. But go ahead, shoes. Okay. Um, yeah, I was saying earlier. I do think I do think all three can play play early. Um, I do think that the, um Spank can get some time next year. And what what um Snacks was saying is very you know very relevant. He um he's a grinding player. He does a lot of different things. That's what I always liked about him. Uh, man, I was really high on him. Um, he does a lot of things. You know, he he rebounds the ball. He plays defense. He doesn't have to have the ball in his hands to score. So those things bode well for a freshman getting on the court. So I do agree with that. Um, uh, with Snacks and that. That that does bode well for him getting on the floor. I just think that um, I'm a, I'm gonna throw it out there. Doran was a Doran is the number the number three player in the state. Some places number two. Some people would say number two. He was high. He was highly regarded. Um, uh, I think when you get a guy like that, you kind of got to make sure he succeeds. <laughs> you want to get the others. So I that. think in Doran's case, he got to play his way out of the. He, He's gonna get every opportunity to play early. Now Mo's not gonna play him if he's not holding up his end of the deal. Mo's not just gonna give him time. He still gotta come in and work and get it. I think he's gonna get every opportunity to play a little bit early because of just kind of the the, the the stature the stature of signing him. You know, care. No, I get it. I it, was, get it. it was really it was really a big 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 sign and a big eye catcher to get him. And I, I think you gotta kind of give him every opportunity to succeed as long as he takes. Takes it by the horns and runs with it. He's gonna have to, but he, you know, I, I don't, I don't expect Mo to just give him time. But I think he'll get every opportunity to, you know, he has a, he has an offensive package that you can really utilize him and let him be a little bit more of a, 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 um, a prime figure in the offense. Or uh, uh, utilize maybe you get a little, you know, get a little more offense out of him early, earlier than maybe this, this thing. You can maybe run some things, get him some shots. You know, get him involved in the offense maybe a little bit better than than, than Spank early. So, you know, I just think he's going to get every opportunity to play. That signing, I think it caught a lot of people off guard with them, you know, being so highly ranked. So for yourself, did that catch you off guard? I don't think a lot of people believe we had a shot at him or even knew we were recruiting. Well, I won't say it caught me off guard because I knew they were, you know, we kept been talked to him and offered him. They had, they had offered him way back in December. When he was here at the um, when they played out of Mississippi College, in Snacks deal, um, in Snacks event that he has, uh, uh dang, can't take the name of it now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Snacks. So we need snacks on his yeah, yeah, see, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get my plug, and he can't, he ain't there to take advantage of. Here, here he is. Um, Let's ask him. Let's ask him. <laughs> <laughs> I had a technical difficulty, fellas. My bad. They ain't come back. They ain't come. He was trying to think of the name of the event. The name of what? My event? Yeah. Your event? What's your event next? The what? The Bossa. The Bossa Holiday Invitation. The Bossa. Yeah, the Bossa. Snacks has an event. Snacks has a, 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 a showcase event in December called the Bossa. And um, Pastor Guru played in that event. And when they played in that event, um, uh, um, that, that same day, Jackson State offered an in at Snacks event. So they had gotten in. And made laid the groundwork earlier, and you know, um, with the with the recruit with the recruiting landscape now, where just you know everybody's concentrating on signing transfers a little more than high school guys, it kind of worked itself out where he kind of you know he had some other schools in the same realm as Jackson is recruiting it. Um, a couple of mids, some mids were fooling with him, but they hadn't really pulled the trigger, and you know, he wanted, and, and so I think that 
has it progressed? It just made sense for him to go with Mo being a pro coach, being a former pro, um, stay home and play. Um, you know, things just, just, it just, it just, everything fell in place for Jackson County. But I knew they were recruiting him, you know, um, but they kind of fell in place late. Things kind of fell in place late that he kind of, that, that they just ended up being his best option. And what about you, Snack? Were you surprised? I mean, obviously the offer was made at your event, but were you surprised that he committed and, and signed with Jackson State? No, I ain't going to say I'm surprised. Um, I definitely think that um, he saw it as an opportunity um, to, you know, go into the Division One level uh, right out of high school. Um, and like you say, to play for someone that's made it from your state or someone that has been successful. Um you know, from from the state of Mississippi, and I mean, like Shu said, I mean NBA champion, he's pro. Um, you got Coach Trey Johnson as well that's on the staff that has uh, done it from the sweat. I mean, he's 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 went professional from the sweat, and I mean, he was a guard. So I definitely think that you know those two relationships itself um, made it made it an easy decision for him. And I mean, Spank had already committed, and those two guys play AU together too. A lot of the uh, a lot of people may not uh, remember, mm -hmm. but they've been playing AAU together probably for the last two, three years, and they have a great relationship. So um, I know Spank, once, once Spank knew that Dorian had uh, got offered by Jackson State, I know they probably stayed in constant communication yeah. of, you know, wanting to, wanting to you know, be, be on the same team. So I definitely think that, um, I mean, I, I think that, that is, I, I know he, I know he, he, he going to embrace it, and I think that he's going to, like Shu said earlier, like of course all of us know that he can he can come in right away and have some impact on the team. Um, he got athleticism, he can shoot the ball. He a dog. Like he not, he not scared. Um, he get after it. So I definitely think that bringing that mentality that he has, like he has that relentless kind of uh, you know persona to himself. So I definitely think that it, it's gonna translate to this level. And then you mentioned Spank committing early, signing early, and, and staying in Dorian's ear with that relationship. They talked about that as well. I know that played a big part in it. But were you surprised that Spank committed and signed early and went ahead and shut his recruitment down? What do you remember about that recruitment? With Spank recruitment, I, I kind of figured that he was going to commit early because, like, I know I knew he wanted to go Division One, And at the time, uh, this was one of the Division Ones that, like, jumped out and, and kept a consistent relationship with him. Um and it's not it wasn't too far from from home. I mean he's a Yazoo City kid, so mm -hmm. that drive from Yazoo to Jackson, I mean you can you can do that in a in a heartbeat. So I definitely think that factoring in his home his home state right here at Jackson, Yazoo kind of, you know, right beside each other. I think that it was a no brainer. And like a lot of like what a lot of people didn't know about like Spank situation is he kind of already understood um like the sense of urgency that like if he had this offer and and they were you know it was mutual interest between like JSU staff and like him like actually wanting to get it done, um he knew that he he needed to go ahead and jump on it early and, and take that opportunity because a lot of guys mm -hmm. kind of wait too late mm -hmm. and then you got transfers that that um that come available and you you know just how Shu said how the landscape of college basketball is now sometimes if you don't jump on it early it, it's not there late so. Yep. I definitely think that um, there was this was this was somewhere that he really really wanted to be, and I think that um, like you say, he gonna be. I, I'm gonna go ahead and go on the limb and say he gonna be a he gonna be a. By the time he a senior, I say he a four year guy at Jack State. He gonna be a first team All Swag guy. Okay, we you heard it here first. Snacks yeah. called it. We we gonna go back and play this four years from now. Yeah, he gonna, gonna be a, a first team All Swag guy. Snacks called it. You know, I, when you ask that, this is a surprise or not. Um, I, I I look at it the same way as Stag looks at it. Um, you know, with the landscape now, when you got somebody that's really interested in you, and I know that they were interested in him back as far back as last summer. They had already started putting the work in with put some work in with Uber last summer, and um, they they, they kind of got it in, and both and, and they had a you know had mutual interest, like like Snag said. You know, he, he he understood the landscape, man. When you got a division one offer, you better go and take it. You know, especially if it's one that you feel can be you can you you can you can really get something done with. And I'm not and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this out there. I mean, let's not fool ourselves. 
the Mobius factor and the, and the Trey Johnson factor, both former NBA guys. That the fact that those that those two guys are there, and the local kids, they're in the local kids, you know, eyesight all the time. They're there. People are talking about. It, they're on the news. This and that. They're always around. That 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 Mo Williams Johnson factor plays a big deal with the with the kid with the local kids. Just I'm not gonna you know I think it plays a big it carries a lot of weight. Two NBA guys, Mo especially, you know, mm-hmm. having, having been in the league as long as he's in. Trey, you know, having been in the league and coming from the league, having been in the NBA coming from this league itself. I think I think they carry a lot they carry a lot of weight with the in-state kids. You know, because mm-hmm. You know, they feel like they can go, they can stay here and go to play for someone that they understand that's going, that they can give them good direction on getting to the next level. You know, and they they they, they kind of they're excited about playing for those name guys. Right. I think that carries a lot of weight. Let's talk about Ebo. He's yeah. a the intriguing prospect that a lot of fans want to know about. So let, let's hear his story. Where, where is he from? How long has he been playing basketball? How did he end up at Ridgeland? Well, in in Ridgeland, Mississippi, whoever want to take whoever want to start and take that one. I can't tell you how he ended up in Ridgeland. <laughs> I just know he's there. Uh, he came in last year during the year, so he didn't play any last year. And he, he started playing in the summer. We started watching. I started seeing him play in the summer. Um, he played summer ball with Ridgeland, and, and and you know was really intriguing. Um, uh, we did we did the. Um, Crossroads in the South Camp, he played in that, had a really good camp. And as the season went on and on and on, he kept getting better and better. You could you can see that, you know, he out of the three guys, he's probably the one that that's got the most um growth that you know, that's got that's got a kind of figure it out a little bit more. He's gonna have the most growth, need the most growth, the most nurturing it, it, to be to, to play, you know, to be really effective. Um, that's what a lot of big guys because in high school they can't really be big guys, right, you know. Right. So he he got to tip it toe around guys, try not to throw his weight around too much. Um, can't just go up and go through up and through guys for baskets in high school. When he gets to college, all that that, that was done and how the way he was played in high school goes out the window. So I think he's gonna be really effective down the line, maybe even before this season's over. I just, but but he's got a lot of upside, a lot of ability. He scored the ball around the goal, got a nice little jump hook. He rebounds, he eats up rebounds, and he rebounds not just in his area. He will go out of his area and get rebounds. Um, he's he's not necessarily a high rise or shot blocker, but he takes up a, he's a space eater in there who walls up really well, and swags full of those kind of guys. You know, either they are big guys that are wall that are that are walling off guys. Are they still those six, 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 seven athletic guys? But you know, you see, you see a lot of both of those kind in the conference. So I think he fits in the conference real well. Um, I think as he as he um, matures as a player, gets more some coaching. I, I think he could easily be an all conference player also. I really know he has a lot of you know he's nimble with his feet. Uh, uh, he can he can he can change ends. He's not a speed merchant, but he can change ends really well. Got really good hands. Um, passes well out the post. He does a lot of really, really good things. He's just got to, you know, continue to work and getting better at him. He, I think he was a really, really good get. I think he easily could have been a, you know, in the past, he'd have easily been a CUSA type guy, I think. I really think he would have been. Um, so so I think he was a major get for, for more than, in, you know, at, at this level. Yeah, to shoes one, I definitely think that, um, like Ebo was a guy that like if he goes to the junior college level, like in two years it'll be hard to get him back if you don't take him right away. Mm. So I definitely think that, you know, that that the hats off go to the staff for, you know, getting in there and ensuring that it get done and, and that he comes as a freshman. Cause I definitely think that like said, each year, I mean, he I think he's gonna get better and better. And I think as light as he get on his feet, I think he's gonna get a little bit more athletic too. But like Shu said, he takes up a lot of space. Um, once he gets it down there in the post, I mean, he can score down there. I definitely think that, um, like he want he one of them guys that that you got to account for. Like, you don't see these type of guys come in as a freshman, right. 
um in in the conference. You you normally see like these six nine and these six tens, like after they went somewhere else or mm-hmm. they they transferred from other levels and then came in. So to get him as a freshman and you know he can be, you know, under the mentorship of Mo uh Trey and, and uh, Tyler, I definitely think that, that they can definitely, you know, mold him into a great basketball player. The one thing that I always hear about him when people talk, I hear him say getting better, right? Constantly getting better. So, Snacks, I know you saw Ebo recently. You, we, you and I talked last week, and I was a bunch of big name guys in, in the local gym, right? Just had just scrimmaging, right? Uh, right. Run. And he was one of the first names that you mentioned out of all these big name guys. And that's always what I hear about him. He's getting better and better and better. So, what did you see of him as, a, as recently as last week? I mean, last week we had a lot of former uh, pros in. We had a lot of different guys that are actually in college right now um, that are having an impact at their universities. And, I mean, he didn't look out of place. Mm. He looked like he belonged. Um, even, I mean, it, it was good to see those guys embrace him and kind of push him to, to go a little harder. I think, um, you know, sometimes when you get in there with guys and you, you know they're kind of a little bit higher than your playing level, you know, some guys kind of shy away from that. Um, I think like he he came, like it was post players down there that that they were pretty good. They were like it was some guys in there, and he was scoring it, scoring it under the goal. He was running the floor. He was screening well. He was doing everything that you would want from from a big man. And um, you could see guys pulling them to the side after games and tell them like that's how you got to play. On um, they were pushing them, and even they can see the potential. So I definitely. Know that if they could see it and, you know, they played on higher levels and, you know, if he wasn't quality and they didn't think that he was very good, I don't think that they would take time out to, you know, pull him to the side and continue to motivate and encourage him. So I definitely t- think that he's, he's, he's see the light. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to go back to this transfer report. We've been talking about it all night. And one thing that you said when we were talking about Dorian, you said, you know, if if he stays four years, that's the thing now, like if he stays four years, we have to have to preface that. So what is y'all, what are y'all's thoughts on the transfer portal and the NIL and how it affects SWAC basketball? Because we've lost guys in the past, like a Javius McKinney and then more recently Ken Evans and I even Tilly Bowler on the women's side. But at the same time, we picked up a guy like a Deshaun Ruffin, so it works both ways uh, from the portal. And also two WNBA draft picks on the women's side out of the portal. So what y'all thought on, thoughts on the transfer portal, NIA, and how that affects uh, a school like a Jackson State? Well, there's, there's definitely some give and take both ways with it. Um, you know, um, Right, these days and timing, mean, just look at what's going on. You got guys playing at four different schools in four different years. <laughs> nah, they, they just, they just moving around. They, you know, it's wide open now. Uh, gun for hire. <laughs> About gun, it's gun for hire ball going on in some places now. And um, uh, um, you saw the guy, the guy left New Mexico. The, the today side, he's going to Washington. Got a two hundred, uh, got like a two million dollar NIL deal for Washington. I mean, you know, he was player of the year in the Mountain West last year to go to Washington in the um, Big Ten and got like a $2 million NIL deal for one year. So, I mean, it's just the wild, wild west out there right now. So, you just kind of got to figure out how you're going to navigate it, figure out how you're going gonna, to gonna use it to, to work for you um, and not, and not uh, you know, and, and just, you know, you, got, you don't know if you're going to hold on to your guys or not, but you got to be out there trying to, you know what you when you lose one, you got to try to gain one. It's just it's just wide open right now. Like I say, it's the wild wild west. Yeah, I definitely think like like she was said, like yeah. it, it, it's it's kind of it's a give and take. Like I feel like the portal is a blessing to some and it's a curse to others. Mm-hmm. Um, like if you think about like past guys, I mean, it's a lot of guys like or oh, Javion McKinnis. Uh, I mean he he was at the university five years. So with the, the landscape of NIL, like in, in some terms, a, a lot of people say fit. A lot of people say like um, he could have just said Jack State, but I think like as, as guys advancing their career, I mean, I think it was very loyal of him to redshirt a year. Mm-hmm. Play, he played four, four years for university, I mean, and then just, you know, take a bet on himself and, and try to, you know, not only just go for NIL purposes, but try to go in a league where, you know, each and every night is somebody that's on someone's draft board that he can play against to be as a measuring stick for himself and, you know, his overseas or his professional aspirations. So, um, and I think, like, 
a guy like Ken Evans. I mean, Ken Evans is at Chackle State for six six years. <laughs> it, it seems like right. So, yeah, so a lot of these guys <laughs> at the university for yeah, like a lot of these guys at the university for longer for longer than than you know a four year tension. So I mean, in some cases, like these guys just like they giving universities everything. They you know they play their their four years and then in some cases and more. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I think it's a blessing to curse the song. I think more so than anything, like it's about fit, uh, going playing where. It'll be a good fit where it's not too high of a level. Um, but like you say, we're bringing when people coming in, like Amisha Williams came in, she she had a very outstanding career at Jackson State. Angel coming from USC, she had a very, very good year years at Jackson State. And I definitely think that Deshaun, we all know that mm-hmm. um it helped that Deshaun to be one of the best players in the country. So, you know, I think that some players like have had enough of the glitz and glamour, and they just want to be somewhere where it's, you know, it's comfort. It's not the, you know, the hoorah, and they can just, like, focus on the game of basketball itself and and be very successful. Um, And I definitely think that it's like some guys that you can look and say, man, if these Mississippi kids would have just came to Jackson State, uh, three, four of these guys and rallied around each other, that they could they could have been very successful in the conference and win swag championships. So I definitely think that you just got to, I mean, every situation is different. I'll say that. Every situation is different. No doubt. No doubt. In the long run, for a lot of these players, you come down to the point where you got to make a business decision. You know, let's not fool ourselves. It gets down to the point where it's a business decision at times. And so, like with, like with, uh, uh, um, oh, what's just left? We just talked about just, just leaving Jackson now. He, Get um, it. you know, Ken, it was Ken. Yeah, Ken Evans. He, he, like Snacks said, he done gave him four years, and it's a business decision. Go get him some NIL money and try to get, you know, maybe an opportunity to, to, you know, you never know. It might mess around and end up in the G League or something, you know. So after four years, you know, three or four years here at Jackson, four, in the kid's case, about five years here at Jackson, you know, yes, it's, it's, he, had, he got to bet on himself and make a business decision for himself a little bit. So it's hard to, it's hard to um, you know, the grudge of kid, a young, a man, young man, that, that opportunity. And it's crazy to think Ken started his freshman year of, of playing when he was a junior in the classroom. He sure did. He <laughs> sure did. Yeah, yep, he sure did. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. So, I mean, I definitely yeah. think that all them, them guys are going to do well. Uh, I think, I think, like you say, a guy like Deshaun, he can, he can very well be one of them guys that, that you look up and, and be a 25 point per game type guy, like night in, night out. But I think we, we'll all be surprised if Deshaun isn't one of the top scorers, not just in the squat, in the country. In the nation. We'll all be surprised. If, he, if he's back here, if, if he's anywhere near his old self, health wise, I think all, any, all of us will be surprised if he's not potentially one of the leading scorers in the country. I mean, I just, you know, I, I, I feel that way about his raw ability, the things he can do with the ball in his hands, the way he can put it in the hole. But I feel like if he, if he's back healthy, he, he's gonna be, he's gonna be more than a handful. He, he's gonna be a lot. He, he's, he's pretending, you know, he's possibly player of the year, and then, and, and you know, he's a guy that can get to the, get to the G League or to the league out of the conference. I definitely think. Yeah, he I can. think, I think, I think the way that that Jack State play too, like the way like. Like most systems, I definitely think that it's gonna complement his his play style well too. Well, how they get up and down. I mean, they they in, like in the seventies and eighties, sometimes in the nineties. So mm-hmm. I definitely think that like they pace and they style of play gonna gonna fit his game perfect. No doubt. Well, we wait to see it. We can't wait, man. We hate that. Hate that we missed him last year. We were anticipating that. So I uh, definitely looking for a big year out of him, fellas. As always, we appreciate y'all, man. Thank y'all for taking the time. Well, out. I just I just want to say this. I just want to say this. The Braves ain't scared of Deshaun Ruffin. The, Bra- the Braves ain't scared of Deshaun Ruffin. To, we we ain't not had on defense. It, it, took, it took the whole show to do what he had to do. I knew it was coming. I was trying to cut it, shut it down before he got in there, but it's all good. We ain't gonna, we ain't gonna tell him about. We ain't gonna tell him about the other time, cool. What, what he had on. <laughs> yeah, we, we deleted that video. We deleted that. Flag. <laughs> hey, but, but but stacks. I want before we go, man. I want to congratulate you on the premiere of the, of the documentary, man, the underdog. So, uh, tell us Appreciate about that project real quick, man. How the premiere went and things like that. Man, the premiere went well. Um, I was glad that 
you know, supporters, uh, alumni of Jackson State, um, local people in the community. I, I'm glad that a lot of people came out. I definitely think that, um, you know, it, it motivated people from not only just athletics, but in any walk of life. Like, I mean, businessmen, musicians, artists, influencers, whatever it may be. I definitely think that just the, the story of kind of telling the adversities or uh, uh, beating the odds, I definitely think that it, it was motivational and, you know, it can reach any any audience um, and serve as a beacon of hope for others. So, you know, the I love always repping. I'm I'm glad that it, that moment happened at Jackson State, and I'm glad that you know it, it was it was a national thing, and people embraced that moment and all the opportunity that was provided. You know, from just that moment, and me be able to represent my university on on a national scale, that's something that I always you know you know I always embrace. No doubt, man. Keep up the good work, man. Keep making us proud. And is there anything that you guys want to plug before you go? I know y'all got a lot going, a lot going on. So anything you want to plug? Hey, I'm just saying, hey, y'all, you all take a take a look on this Super Hoop Report, www.mshoopreport.com. Man, I got player rankings out there. I got, uh, you know, uh, um, I got uh, uh, different reports on different events, and things like that. Uh, you know, um, um, when during the high school season, I got team rankings and. And all state teams and everything. So I try to keep a, you know, for those who don't know already, just kind of keep a look at the site. You know, I try to keep you abreast of what's going on in the state. No doubt. That's the go to site for Mississippi basketball, high school basketball boys. Hughes has been doing it for almost, what, 30 years now. I know 25. I'm talking about midsouthhoops.com. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, again, man, we thank y'all for checking in. And uh, y'all can catch them at a local gym. Just go to a local gym. Not just doing basketball season. I'm talking about the middle of the week during the summer. Just go to a gym. NBA, MRA. Anytime. <laughs> Some hooping going on. Y'all see these guys. All right. Fellas, y'all. Appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. Y'all take it easy. Appreciate it. <laughs> All right, boy. Tiger Talk with the 1400 Club is presented by Bet Online.